In a terrifying yet increasingly familiar scene, Mount Luatobi Laki Laki erupted violently on July 7, 2025, hurling an enormous ash plume nearly 60,000 feet, 18 kilometers, into the sky. Located on Indonesia's Flores Island, the twin volcano, known for its destructive power, has once again plunged surrounding villages into a state of fear and paralysis. The eruption began at approximately 8.20 a.m. local time and lasted for over 25 minutes, shaking the earth and casting the sky into darkness. A roaring column of thick gray ash burst through the clouds, visible from over 60 miles away. Villages near the volcano were blanketed in a layer of hot volcanic ash and gravel, forcing thousands to scramble for safety. Indonesia's Center for Volcanology and Geological Hazard Mitigation, PVMBG, raised the aviation color code to red, the highest level, warning that the volcanic ash cloud could drift into commercial flight paths. By noon, over 24 flights from major carriers such as Jetstar, Qantas, Virgin Australia, and Singapore Airlines were canceled or delayed affecting hundreds of passengers across the Asia-Pacific region. Ngura Rai International Airport in Bali reported visibility issues and rerouted several incoming aircraft. Satellite imagery from Japan's Himawari 9 and the U.S. NOAA system confirmed that the ash cloud stretched over 300 km westward, propelled by upper-level winds. The ash content is estimated to include silica-rich particles, which pose serious health risks and can damage aircraft engines. This is one of the highest eruptions from Luatobi in recent decades, said volcanologist Dr. Indra Wijaya. The vertical extent and density of the ash plume indicate a very powerful magma chamber release. Local authorities in East Flores Regency have declared a state of emergency in areas within a 10-kilometer radius of the volcano. At least eight villages, including Baru, Hokeng, and Nurabelen, are experiencing heavy ashfall. Entire rooftops disappeared under inches of gray ash. Crops have been destroyed and drinking water contaminated. Over 10,000 people are believed to be affected by the fallout. Schools have been closed, hospitals are operating on emergency protocols, and government teams are distributing face masks, clean water, and emergency rations. Photos show elderly residents being carried through thick layers of ash as mothers clutch crying children and livestock flee through the choking haze. An evacuation zone of seven kilometers around the crater remains in effect, though some residents, concerned about property theft, have refused to leave. We heard a deep rumble like thunder. Then the ground started shaking, said a resident from the village of Conga. Minutes later, everything went dark. The sky turned black. Ash fell like rain. This is not Luatobi's first eruption in 2025. Since January, the volcano has experienced at least four significant eruptive events in March, May, and June, with increasing strength and frequency. The July 7th eruption is by far the largest, and geologists fear it may not be the last. Lewatobi is a twin volcano, consisting of Lewatobi Laki Laki, the male volcano, and Lewatobi Perempuan, female. While both are active, the male cone has been the more aggressive in recent years. The current eruption is believed to be part of a deeper magmatic reactivation possibly triggered by tectonic shifts along the complex Sunda Banda arc. Indonesia, part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, is home to more than 120 active volcanoes. 
but Liwatobi stands out due to its proximity to populated areas and its explosive history. In November 2024, a sudden eruption killed nine hikers who were near the summit. That tragedy sparked a nationwide review of volcanic safety measures. Yet months later, the threat is back and stronger than ever. The fallout from the eruption could have long-term consequences for the region's agriculture and ecosystem. Volcanic ash is acidic and, when combined with rain, can form corrosive slurries that damage leaves, clog irrigation systems, and poison soil. Officials from the Ministry of Agriculture estimate that over 600 hectares of rice and cornfields may be lost. Ash deposits have also contaminated rivers, causing fish deaths and threatening drinking water supplies. Wildlife in surrounding forests is believed to be fleeing the area, with increased sightings of snakes and monkeys in nearby urban centers. Meteorological officials warn that if heavy rainfall occurs in the coming days, lahars, fast-moving volcanic mudflows, could form and sweep through valleys with devastating force. Despite the scale of the eruption, there have been no confirmed deaths or serious injuries as of this writing, a testament to the region's improved early warning systems and community preparedness. But officials caution that the situation remains volatile. Seismic tremors continue to rattle the mountain, and gas emissions remain high. SO2 levels near the crater have spiked to over 2,500 tons day, a sign that more magma could be rising to the surface. Experts from Indonesia's geological agency are conducting drone flyovers and thermal imaging to monitor changes in the crater structure. Residents have been advised to stay at least six to seven kilometers away from the summit and to wear protective gear when outdoors. Emergency sirens have been installed in key villages, and evacuation drills are ongoing. As images of the eruption spread across social media, the world is once again reminded of the fragility of life in the Ring of Fire. Humanitarian agencies, including the Red Cross and ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance, have begun mobilizing support. Australia and Japan have offered technical assistance for ash analysis and aerial monitoring. Travel advisories have been issued by several countries including the US, UK and Canada, warning tourists to avoid eastern Indonesia and to check with airlines before traveling. The eruption of Mount Liwatobi is a dramatic warning of nature's power and the increasing volatility of our world. While no lives have been lost yet, the ash-covered villages, ruined crops, and grounded plains offer a grim preview of what may come if the mountain erupts again. For now, Indonesia watches the sky, waiting for the next tremor, the next column of fire, and hoping it doesn't turn deadly.